Hi, this is Simca Travels, and today we are in the Dordogne. Well, not quite, no. Oh. Where are we then? Well, between Perigord and the Lot, which is in Occitanie. So we are in Nouvelle Aquitaine, Occitanie. Okay, so, hi, this is Timka Travels, and today we are in a large region of southern France. Yes, that's the one. The Dordogne is an area of southern France that, unsurprisingly, surrounds the Dordogne River. This is rustic and rural France at its finest and is an area adored by Brits, so much so that we French often joke that only the Brits actually go there. Which wasn't true because there were plenty of French enjoying a staycation there because the shallow and slow flowing river is perfect for hopping in a canoe and floating downstream. And high above, medieval castles sit on a high vantage point, surveying the valleys below. The thing about all these chateaus are, is that because they're at the top of the hill, towering over the top of everything, you can't really get a great view of them from the ground. So, what's the best thing to do? Get on a boat, obviously. And take to the water, which is exactly, exactly. what we're doing now. On the Dordon River. <laughs> what more do you want? There are worse things we could be doing with our time. The Dordogne's most famous spot is La Roque Gagéac, which is where we start our tour of the region. A town built into the cliff, the picturesque village sits at the bottom of a ravine with steep cliffs surrounding it. Historically, people lived in caves dug into the cliff, but now they live in houses nestled at the bottom. Which sounds lovely, but our guide pointed to a spot where no houses stand anymore, which he said was because of a section of cliff that collapsed on top of a house there in the 70s, killing five people. Not so lovely anymore, huh? Stay in your canoe long enough and you'll end up in Benac et Cazenac, which is just a few miles downriver. Dominated by an imposing castle that sits on the hill, which dates back to at least the 12th century, the winding, steep streets lead up the hill to the Grand Chateau, which has survived to the present day, almost intact. All these uh, castles at the top of hills are really gorgeous, aren't they? Nakarin, though. Yeah, exactly. Like each one, you've got to climb all the way to the bloody top. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, is it worth it? Well, the views, yeah. I expect. But actually, how much of the castle can we actually see? Uh, no, love. There's a panorama, though, so we shall go. On the hill between those two towns is one of the most stunning gardens you'll ever visit. Surrounding the fairly average Chateau de Marquisac are its absolutely remarkable gardens. Though the chateau dates back to the 17th century, it was in the 1860s that its owner, Julien de Cervelle, began his aspiration to transform the grounds into an Italianate garden. He planted thousands of boxwood trees in unusual formations and took to them with some garden shears. Today, there are 150 southern trees in the garden, all carefully trimmed and arranged in the most striking and extensive collection of topiary in the world. His intention was that the shrubs resemble the backs of a grazing flock of sheep, which it absolutely does. The result is a dreamlike landscape, which you'll just yearn to explore. And it helps that the garden has a really good view as well. Now, we're using the term Dordogne fairly loosely here to describe this region of France. In fact, in France, it's mostly known as the Périgord. 
Really, the Dordogne itself is just one department, of which there are 96 on mainland France. My aim is to visit all of them at least once, but we managed to tick off a fair few while we were down there visiting, because the entire region is littered with adorable historic towns that are definitely worth a visit. With their castles sitting at the top of hills, surrounded by tightly packed streets inside town walls, these medieval fortresses were built to last, and they've done exactly that. Everyone needs a holiday cat, and on this holiday, we have adopted Gaspar. Gaspar! Hi! Are you loving life? Oh, you're so little cutie. Sala La Canida is a town known for its markets, where they sell all the local delicacies, including foie gras, the region's most famous product. Market days are regular, but there is also the permanent market in the Church of Saint Marie, which was recently restored to combine contemporary elements, including a glass panoramic lift and the biggest iron doors I've ever seen. Bergerac is a quaint town with plenty of nods to its most famous resident, Cyrano de Bergerac. Except he didn't actually live there because he's fictional, so... Okay, why do you always have to be so technical? The Dordogne is one of France's biggest wine-producing regions, so no trip to the area would be complete without a trip to a vineyard. The most famous is, of course, Montbazillac, which also has a chateau. Is there anything more French than combining a visit to a chateau with a visit to a vineyard? No, probably not, no. Something else that makes the region famous is its enormous quantity of troglodyte dwellings. While nobody actually lives in them anymore, these network of caves have been inhabited for thousands of years in some way or another. In fact, some of the oldest cave paintings in the world have been found in the region, and the valley of the Vizier River is renowned worldwide as a Neolithic hotspot. There are so many caves that choosing which one to see is actually quite difficult because there is so much choice. Lascaux are the most famous, but nowadays you can only see a replica of the original painting, so we decided that we actually wanted to see something real and authentic and headed to the ones above ground, built into the cliffs. We visited the troglodyte villages of La Madeleine and La Roque Saint Christophe on the same day as they are only a couple of miles apart. Both have been inhabited by humans for thousands of years, and though people decided that living in buildings is far more comfortable in the last millennia, there have still been extended periods of time when people have returned and reverted to living in the cave dwellings. Vertical towns cut into the rock, they were incredibly easy to defend, often with only one point of entry that could be easily sealed and defended. Sitting high above the river below, this was a brilliant spot for people to live in times of crisis, which would often continue for many, many years. 
Though the temporary structures they built within the caves are long gone, there is evidence of centuries of habitation all over these unusual caves. In the nearby region of the Lot, we highly recommend making the drive to visit the stunning village of saint cyr la poupie And we also recommend parking in the nearby Bousier and walking up the river to approach this gorgeous town from below. Climb up into the commune and spend some time exploring the winding streets where surrealist painter André Breton made his home. We actually intended to visit this village as part of our trip to Occitany last year, but we soon discovered that it's pretty difficult to visit on public transport. So if you're going to visit, driving is your best option. So we've seen a lot of hilltop villages now, Jeremy, and which one do you think is the best one? Oh, this one, absolutely. saint cyr la in the lot. The final stop on our tour was a nearby town of Rocamadour. Consisting of a chateau on the hill and a network of monastic buildings cut into the cliff beneath and the town itself at the bottom, this vertical town clings precariously to its cliff and is representative of the society as it was back then. Known as a three estates, the poor were at the bottom, the clergy in the middle and the rich at the top, just like the building in this town. A site of pilgrimage for centuries due to its famed statue of the Black Madonna, it is still an important centre for French Catholics today. The area in and around the Dordogne is one of the prettiest we have visited in France. While it may not have the pomp and grandeur of many French destinations, this is about picture-perfect rustic France, which is what makes it such a popular destination. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe, but most importantly, subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Team Quote Travels where you can see all of my amazing photographs. Yes, yes, Jeremy, we are perfectly aware of the fact that all of the photographs are yours, but make sure that you tune in next time to find out where in the world we end up next. Until next time, folks. See ya. Bye. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye. <laughs>